Hello and a very good morning to you and a very warm welcome to Spain and precisely La Molina here in the Pyrenees. We're here for day number two of the World Para-Alpine Skiing World Cup. A very good morning to you. My name's Stephen Jameson. I'll be anchoring the coverage today from Spain where we've seen some fantastic action already and we've only had one day. So many surprises, so many battles out there on the course. This is the final event before the World Cup final so it really does mean so much to all these skiers competing here this week. The weather is absolutely perfect. As you can see, the sunglasses are on. It is beautiful here in Spain, but the action out on the course is fierce. Here's a look back at what happened yesterday. There are all our winners of day number one. Some fantastic performances. Big shout out as well in particular to Hyacinth de la Place of France winning his first ever World Cup gold. And Niels de Langen of the Netherlands as well in the men's sitting. That silver medal that he took yesterday was his first ever World Cup medal. He's a silver medalist in a world championship, but never won a World Cup. He was overjoyed, and that's what we like to see. Plenty of storylines already emerging here in La Molina. The men's standing continues to be a fierce competitive battle. Can your own camp sure reclaim the title on day number two after slipping to third yesterday? Plenty to look forward to on day two. Just time to remind you to get in touch with us on social media. We are at Para Alpine on all the usual channels, Twitter, Instagram, and on Facebook. Use hashtag para alpine but for now though alan i'm going to take uh, i might get the deck chair out actually it's uh, it's over to our race commentator he's alan march thank you very much stephen jameson he's off to relax that's the last thing we're gonna do here in la molina it's day number two as stephen was saying and if you do want to get in touch with us hashtag para alpine you can follow us on twitter Facebook and Instagram with at Para Alpine for all the content away from the live stream that you could possibly need. It is around about minus three in the snow. The air temperature already above freezing. It was only minus one at 6.45 this morning. Uh, so that gives you an indication as to how warm it has been the last few days. 32 gates to get their way through. 30 of them are turning a vertical drop of 300 metres here on the course. As always, six races, 
Six different classifications, three for the men, three for the women. And as always in Giant Slalom, there are two runs. So plenty to run for in the second as long as you get there. Two ladies taking part in the women's VI category then. Mena Fitzpatrick and Melissa Perrine. They finished the opposite way round yesterday. Melissa Perrine snatching victory from Mena Fitzpatrick. These two know plenty about each other. And these two know plenty about each other. This is Jennifer Keogh on the right-hand side. The orange top and the... Black G on the orange bib, signifying the guide. And what a team these two have become over the past few years. Paralympic champions. Oh, and it's an early exit here. And it is a fault with a ski. Oh, well, these two are ever smiling. And I'm sure in a couple of moments they'll start smiling again. But right this second, they'll just be disappointed. We're barely three or four gates in here. And the left boot just comes unclipped from the ski. And day two, going into a day off tomorrow, ends very, very quickly. Now then, if Melissa Perrine fails to make it to the bottom of the run here, we won't have a women's VI in the second run. Something I've never witnessed. There we go. Now, Melissa Perrine of Australia, World Cup leader. That's denoted by the bib that says leader. That one's easy to figure out. Bobby Kelly, self-proclaimed legend, as she likes to say. His first season guiding Mel Perrine, who's uh, talked openly about taking a year out. Ian Geiger, the uh, head coach, discussing not being around next season as well. So uh, it could be all change for a young Australian pack. Here, these two will clock up some very, very easy points here on day two. Not that that's the way the experienced Australian will like it. But it is the way the 30-year-old Based in New South Wales, will pick up some points. Another steady run in the second run. And maximum points are on offer here for Melissa Perrine without contest. So an early exit and surprise for Mena Fitzpatrick. And it'll be even more smiles for Perrine. We saw in the highlights, she had to leap over the line pretty much yesterday. There'll be no such drama today. And there's the finished results. Then a DNF did not finish. And Mel Preen takes that first event. Women standing. Coming up next. Yeah, that's all of the ladies in it. Hondo, yeah. Kunkel, Boucher, Terjon, Pembo, Schmidt, Rida and Ramsey. Here is Ami Hondo. First of the women's standing athletes to go, 22 years old. He's represented Japan in able bodied rugby sevens in a world youth tournament back in 2014. Fancies herself at uh, 15 aside rugby as well. We fly half to fly in. Ami Hondo. Oh, she's going to miss. No, she isn't. Wow, I thought she was going to slide and avoid that blue gate. She managed to get back in, but uh, Hondo will know that that was slippery, slidey work. Ali Kunkel 
got to have my first chat with Ali yesterday. Commentated on her a few times, but only at World Championships and Paralympic Championships. Her time on the World Cup circuit has been minimal. She is still just 17. She wanted me to say hello to her mum. Back at home. Time difference. I'm sure mum's up watching it live, but if not, even on the pre-record, watching it back. Having to manage skiing with studies. Of course, at that age. So minimal time on the World Cup circuit, but looking forward to the US national trials a little bit later on in the year. It's a leading time, though. Cool. We'll get better and better. Somebody who seems to still get better and better despite having an almighty haul of medals. He's Marie Boschet and she's already well inside the time set by Ali. Boucher gets across now 53 34 five seconds 0.42 ahead of Kunkel reigning world and Paralympic champion Frederic Tejon out next How many single leg skiers, but it has proved a very tough competitor in recent times. Second place finish yesterday. Already some 2.45 seconds down. And single leg ski is often using the outriggers. Oh, and it's down and out for Turgeon. It's a long old slide to the gates as well. And uh, Frederic Turgeon wrapped up in the crash barriers at the end. So disappointment for yesterday's medalist. She seems fine at the bottom, I'm told. But she's out of the competition already. I wonder if the hill is just a little bit more slippery than yesterday. People making this course and working on it constantly are really in with a battle with the weather conditions that we are getting. Ironic. The other end of the spectrum to what we've had most part of the season where we've had too much snow at various times. Here comes Pemble. Well, that's there where we lost Turgeon. No such difficulties. But Han I did see Hondo struggle there as well. And through comes Mel Pemble. 10.70 seconds back. Now, I wonder if they'll stop for a brief moment here to repair the fencing at the bottom. And that's exactly what's going to happen. From Switzerland, seventh yesterday and with uh, two fourth positions. Here is Turgeon then coming into this left hander, it just over overcooking it, doesn't she? A little bit of over leaning. It's very difficult for a lot of the athletes going from light to shade. A lot of the shadows out on the course have caused some difficulty. And uh, that was the end of Frederic Turgeon. So the long wait is for Pinyer Schmidt. Dorsal Mel Pemble Navans. Afeto Uzero Quadra. 
0-4, una petita pausa i de seguida, com deim, sortirà el suïssa Big Nash Mead. Ja veiem aquí en zona de meta el Tèric de Turgeon, que no ha pogut finalitzar. Just another look here for Turgeon into the left-hander and single skiers might be interesting when the mono skiers are on at that section as well. And uh, well, Turgeon knew it was coming, knew she was about to get a whack to the back of the head and the back from the net, but that's what they're there for to stop the athletes keep on sliding. And again, you can see just how much hard work has happened to get this course in condition on the other side of that fence the grass and the soil starting to show through Boucher leading from Kunkel from Turgeon Ah, there we go, 53-34, Kunkel in second, Hondo's difficulties at the bottom of her run, 59-60, 104-04 for Mel Pemble, and uh, as we saw, Turgeon sliding out. Say plenty more action still to come. We've got the uh, women's sitting, men's VI, men's standing, and men's sitting competitions as well. Still got a few more to come in this standing event, but uh, that's why we've got a delay. That fence has just about been put back properly. We are waiting to restart uh, this women's standing to a competition. Coaches in various countries. Milling around, you, Netherlands, France, Japan. That's Anya, who is our uh, race director. Now, I said that Ami Hondo had a difficulty with the same place as Turgeon. Just watch here. Big, big slide. And somehow just manages to get back inside that blue gate, but uh, across the line. So that should have been a a word of warning for us, and that affected Hondo's timings on her run. If you want to get in touch, at Para Alpine is what you need. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, of course, if you want the extra content. Here's Binya Schmidt getting going. Another of our skiers who doesn't have the ability to use the ski poles. So Schmidt has a factored time of 96.72, dropping from 171 back at the first intermediate to 561. Really driving in to the corners. Into the final few gates then this is where Turgeon and Hondo struggle not so badly does it for Schmidt but uh, does find herself some 10 seconds back from the leader Anna Maria Rida just 18 and find a good crop of youngsters and new names that turn up the following year after the Paralympics and of course a, a year ago exactly we were all enjoying Pyeongchang not today necessarily today was a day off but uh, the action had already started new Paralympic names and champions had been crowned people like Rida Turgeon and Ali Kunkel will be hoping to get to the next games and make their mark. Here comes Rida towards the line. 
6.79 seconds back. 60.13 for Germany's 18-year-old Anna Margarida. World Championship silver medal winner, Alana Ramsey now. Not at the races yesterday. Only three seconds back. The second split time. Experienced Ramsey. Look at determination on the face. Into the penultimate red gate. No difficulties this time. Uh, Ramsey comes through into second as expected then. Five seconds back. So the rest of the field once again waiting for a mistake from Adi Boucher. Something that really has been eradicated this season. And Boucher takes it, 53.34. Ramsey, 58.52 in second for Canada. The United States, Ali Kunkel, 58.76 in third position. Men's events still to come, but first up, we've got the women sitting. Momoka Murooka, Laurie Stevens, Annalena Forster, and Barbara Van Bergen go head to head for World Cup points. No doubting who the World Cup leader is at the moment. Reigning Paralympic champion. Reigning world champion. And already a victor here in La Molina. We've seen some very good skiers already. Struggle, Mena Fitzpatrick and Frederic Dejean. No one never knows. But Malaoka, at the moment, when it comes to the women's sitski, trying to turn herself into a little bit of a, a Mali Boshe or uh, even Taiki Mori. Who we saw yesterday blazing a trail again, finding his form, the 38 year old. But uh, Mori, an inspiration for Malaoka. And the 21-year-old showing us again her ability. That is a tight one near the bottom. It's well set, that course. 58-26, a nice tricky finish for all of our athletes. Too tricky for some. Laurie Stevens. The Paralympic champion in her own right. And a crack at para swimming as well in her sporting lifetime. Good enough to have held two US records in para swimming. Born with spina bifida. Took up the sport at the age of 12. Stevens will get to the line, but she's a, a good way back on Murooka. Six seconds to be precise. Annalena Forster. No, and a shuffle Huber, of course. Couldn't get time off work. True story. The Forster, though, is very much competing on the circuit. She's inside Muraoka's second intermediate, and by some way, because she was down at the first time check. So this is good from Forster. Finding a good line, getting herself into a good rhythm. Doesn't want to get too wide there. Oh, and she does. Now it's going to wait for the line. 
Oh, 0 0.20 off. That penultimate red gate really is the difference maker, isn't it? Just like Ami Hondo earlier. A bit of a struggle for Annalena Forster. Barbara van Bergen was uh, fairly reserved yesterday, and that's a, a big slide that loses a little bit of momentum for Barbara van Bergen. Big lover of the speed events. Paralympic summer medalist with the Dutch basketball team. We say switching the court for the course. Fifty-eight twenty-six has already gone. And Bergen will hit the line in just over a minute. One oh three twenty-two. So Barbara van Bergen goes in front of Laurie Stevens, but can't affect the two at the top so uh, a battle for first this time around it's close between Muraoka and Forster two tenths of a second close not bad at all now into the men's events then Laplace winning his first ever World Cup yesterday. Kevin Burton crashed out. Miroslav Herrera crashed out. Kobatska, the world champion, beaten Thomas Savard, putting in a good show as well. So those five to tackle the course once more. Well, he said winning was beyond his wildest dreams. He never expected it. Certainly against the reigning giant slalom world champion. However, every course suits people differently. Every time those poles are set out, it's a difficult and different challenge. Oh, and Delaplace clips one of the gates really hard. Well, he'll stay in the course. No, he's gone. Well, yesterday's winner is out. Day two. The day of the disaster. That's our third DNF already. So yesterday's winner has gone. World Cup points up for grabs with one less to compete against. This is Kevin Burton now. Burton and his guide, Kurt Grimmelman, will definitely be wanting to put to one side the DNF of yesterday. Get themselves a completed run. Burton, a little bit like uh, Barbara Van Bergen, has come to Alpine from other sports. At least Kevin's was on the snow, the uh, biathlon and Power across country, of course, the Para Nordic World Championships uh, not long finished out in Canada. Couldn't have been more contrasting temperatures to here in La Molina. Burton in towards the final five gates then. Tight to that. An ultimate red, and as they hit the line, then well, Ken Burton sets the first time in the men's VI 57 65. Bit of a short debrief at the bottom. Miroslav Horeos was quickest over the first two intermediates yesterday, then went out. He is super quick, he and his guide. Maros Hudik throw themselves into every turn. It's given him plenty of success over the years. Carreros. 
This time looking good. He was inside the time from Burton in the latter stages. 57-65. He'll be well inside that. Good finish from Jareos. 3.71 is the difference. 32-year-old leads. Now, B1 skier. Malik Kubatka. Guided by Maria Zatovikova. And he's inside the time. Over a second quicker than Jareos in the early stages. Completely guided by the sound and guidance of Maria. You can hear it through the microphones on the cameras out on the course. The gap closes a little bit. Areos was very quick in the bottom section. Oh, that's really wide from Kubatska. Maria has a speaker at the bottom of her backpack. That's the sound that Kubatska is following. You can see the goggles completely blacked out. Into the bottom section then, 53-94. He's going to have to work hard in his latter stages. I think he'll just miss out here. So Jareos should hold the lead. Oh, just 0.19. Well, I was holding my breath towards the end because all of a sudden Jareos' time looked achievable. Six or seven gates out, it looked like it was getting away from Kobatska. Not to be. Thomas Savard getting ready to go next. So we are just being held at the top. Seventh place finish at the World Championships. So just 17. He and guide Kevin Lamey. a learning season for Thomas Savard. One of the guys take part in the Europa Cup. But nothing really sets you up for a career in Power Alpine than competing on this World Cup circuit. We've enjoyed bringing you the World Cup for the last two years, every race. Covered. Been able to see the reigning stars and the future champions coming through. Savard working hard over the last few gates and he will drop into third position. 2.81 seconds back from Jareos. Similar amount to Kubatska. And that is the Completion of the men's VI event. Reyes from Kubatska, Savard, Burton, and Delaplace. But Delaplace with a DNF. Having won his first ever World Cup yesterday, the Frenchman goes out. So we can look at the standing event start list then. Lindstrom, Piancic, Schimmer, Walsh, Salka, Schneider, Guimont, Phil, Kivari and Balche. After, after Balche, Luskum, Brussan, Misawa, Bodank, Stavi, Takahashi, Kress and Grasto. So the uh, big names 
on the previous page, of course, Balsé, Theo Rimeur. Thomas Walsh getting third place yesterday here at Rock Blanc. Marcus Salka down the order a little bit more so than he had been recently, and the event is just flying by us. Some people just want to watch the action from the comfort of their own helicopter. You can just watch it on the live stream. So, uh, Aaron Lindstrom out on course. The uh, only Swede in the Alpine circuit. Lindstrom, a uh, World Cup podium finisher last season. Some felt that he might be a surprise during Pyeongchang. 18 years old now. And Lindstrom getting across despite a few difficulties towards the end. 51-17. Niko Pajancic now. 21 year old. Born without his right forearm. He was always known to ski with just the one ski pole. Time factor 100%. And he was inside Lindstrom. And he remains that way. In fact, he puts nearly six tenths of a second on top. 0.93 the difference at the second time check for Pajancic. Oh, and as he gets to the line, Pajancic struggles at the end as well. He just looks back at the course. Everybody is throwing daggers with their eyes at that penultimate red gate. Theo Rimeur. Never found wanting when it comes to putting his heart and soul into a performance. A couple of times yesterday, he was chasing Bauche so hard, he was virtually riding on the seat of his pants. A couple of times, I thought he was going to go, but he's got a real, real good bounce back ability. When he looks like he's down, he's not. When he looks like he's out, he's not. And Teo Khmer is never counted out of a podium position. At the moment, he and Bauche battling hard in this men's standing category. When it comes to the giant slalom, Bauche is the World Cup leader. The but there's Khmer getting across the line and a big slide again <laughs> that he manages to control. But he does get a finish that puts him in front. Thomas Walsh. 0.49 down in the early section for the youngster from Vale. But that's better. 0.25 up. Walsh finding a great line in that middle section. Marauding through the gate. Oh, and getting really off balance. He's managed to hold it, but how much time is that going to cost Thomas Walsh? 50 15 is what he wants. Oh, he's outside by 0.34, and you can itemize that one mistake. 49, very equal times for the, all these racers. Marcus Salka. The man with the golden helmet, former overall World Cup winner back in. 2017. Vesonas, he was the man that 
kept finishing third behind Kimur and Barche. Yesterday, that third position was taken from him as well. Walsh has already shown that his speed is up there with Gimur. Marcus Salka finds something in this bottom section. So the shake of the leg on the right side, that's the side of his impairment. He's 2.48 seconds back here, Marcus Salka. Well, salute to the camera. is Christoph Bernhard Schneider. Already 2.89 down in the early stages. Schneider actually picks up a little bit of time. Gimert, 50-15, Walsh 50-49. Oh, and Schneider's out to the side. No finish for Christoph Bernhard Schneider. Very late in the day as well. Now, this is Alexis Guimont. Bronze medalist in Pyeongchang. 0.33 he's not too shabby can he get somewhere near him as 27.73 now remember Walsh was quicker through this section as well the Paralympic medalist another that looks like he's got out of bed in the right shape and in the right frame of mind but like Walsh will he lose time at the bottom where Gimur was quickest. Into the line. No, he won't. New leader, Guimont, shows us what he can do. New leader. It's the first time in a long, long time that somebody other but Gimur or Bauche has led after either of those two have been down. Thomas Field fighting hard on the course, dropping down to 1.31 seconds off. That new lead time, one tenth inside, 50 seconds, and Field flies off to the side. And out of the competition. Look fairly innocuous, this one. Just can't get it back. Just cannot make that right-hander. And slides out. So that was Thomas Few. Finishing his day rather early. This is uh, Thomas Phil from the other angle. You can just see he's never going to make it back to the right. So uh, down he goes. And he'll manage uh, very much to get to the bottom unscathed. But disappointed. Finland's Santeri Kivari up at the top. A bit like Aaron Lindstrom, he's uh, Finland's only competitor on the circuit.
And uh, Guimont, the current leader, 49.90. Théo Rimeur, 50.15. Thomas Wolves, 50.49. So not a lot in it, but a new leader. As we welcome Kivari to the course. Enjoying himself on the World Cup circuit last couple of years. He's inside again on both intermediate times. Fastest time in that second section. 0.28 quicker than the leader. And he gets a 49.90. Kivari. Yes, he can. 49.53. Theo Rimeur drops into third. Real uncharted territory. After Barche. How will he fare with the course? World Cup leader. Bang level with Kivari. Absolutely level with the current leader. 27.09 through the next section. Oh, it's just one one hundredth. What a time that was from Santali Kivari. Even the great Arthur Barche isn't too far ahead. How much... Can he gain or lose in this bottom section? Here comes the tricky left-hander. No problems for Barcher as he tucks in. 49.53. Oh, great finish. Great, great bottom half from Arthur Barcher. 0.66 the difference. Next up, Braden Luscombe. Six years old. It's in uh, Victoria, British Columbia. Right leg amputee at the age of five. Been to two Paralympic Games, Braden. Just the one finish in the Super G. DNFs all around other than that but this is good from him might be five seconds back but uh, showed a lot of good control at times out on the course this is uh, Jordan Rossin number 31 two seconds back and that second time check, but uh, a very different league to Bauche at the moment, but a salute and a kiss as well. This is Haraku Misao, another of our single leg skiers in the standing event in his factored time. Differing to many around him, 88.27. 31-year-old into the final stages. Really had to slow himself down as he hits the line then 54 33 into 11th position for Masawa this is uh, Manuel Bordanx from yesterday saw his prosthetic snap in half right about the ankle position 
I spoke to him briefly as he was leaving the venue yesterday and he just said I looked down and realized my foot was still attached to the ski and then all of a sudden it flew past me if you were watching yesterday you've seen all that but that does get to the bottom this time 54 59 a wave to the camera. Athletes themselves enjoying it. Out on course. In the absence of any Spanish skiers, Roger Pri Davi has become the local favourite. Plenty of cheering for him when he gets to the bottom from the people that are watching on and the volunteers themselves. Mentioned yesterday, Andorra is just a hour or so away oh and Davi goes out to the side and you can see his frustration immediately and he really isn't far from the bottom of the course at that point as well Kohei Tagahashi 18. There's a functional impairment due to cerebral palsy on his right side. Again, another of those unable to use the ski pole in the right hand. Took up the sport in a way to overcome his impairment, suggested by his parents. And the 18 year old, desperate to get to another Paralympic Games. He was uh, 21st in the giant slalom in Pyeongchang. This is uh, Leander Kress. Another 18 year old. Already some five and a half seconds back, but very new. This is the debut World Cup event. Mentioned yesterday, he's uh, big into his kayaking and canoeing as well. So certainly plenty of upper body strength. To have to tackle those sports. And uh, Cress getting to the bottom. The uh, behind. Takahashi. And then to complete the youngsters at the bottom end of this run, this is 17 year old Marcos Nilsson Grasto. And he goes into 14. 56 62. Well within the minute, but uh, only above Leander Kress. So that is the penultimate event done for a first run. Men's standing event looks like this. No surprise at the top, Arthur Bauche is in front, but then plenty of surprises. Santa de Givoli in second position, Alexis Guimon in third. Theo down in fourth, Thomas Walsh just in behind him. We'll have the men's city event next. Big names in this one, Campster, yesterday's winner, Daiki Mori. Never discount Jesper Pedersen, Andrew Kirker, and of course, Niels de Langen getting a second place finish yesterday. So Igor Sikorsky, first athlete out on the course in the men's sitting first run. Bronze medalist, Paralympic Games, the uh, men's sitting category, giving us a different Paralympic champion for all disciplines. The only category to do so. 
Nobody dominated. Rolled forward a year to the World Championships, and Jeroen Kampscher changed all that. However, guys, and maybe have been off the boil a little. We'll be trying to get it back. Take Mori, one of those. Sikorsky knows how to win medals in this very category at Paralympic level. He sets the first time. 58.09 for everyone else to follow. Poland's only athlete in this World Cup. Andrew Kirka. Part of what is not the biggest American team at this part of the World Cup, but look at the effort that Kirka puts in. Throws himself into the turns and he really does use these World Cups as a, a test of just how hard and how far he can push the limits in that Sitski. Two point seven seconds quicker. Has to batter aside that blue gate. Three point eight seven seconds. Fifty four twenty two is now the time to beat as Kirka flies off our screens. He has flown down this mountain. And yes, but Pedersen is away. Point one eight slower than Kirka in the opening section. Both of these two Paralympic champions in their own right, Kirka and Pedersen, both picking up a gold from Pyeongchang. Pedersen just point zero five behind at the second time. That's the young Norwegian. Got a little bit more to gain. 54.22 is what we're looking at. Keep an eye on that clock at the bottom right. 54.22. Yes, it will be. 0 0.13. 54.09 from Pedersen. Kirkano. Wasn't quite able to find the speed that his teammate was yesterday uh, with two very clean runs but lacked a little bit of the dynamic quality you need to be right at the top and that's on show again here 1.87 back from the times now This bottom section from here on in, they can see that line. It's just a one last push through the final gates. Kano's going to be quite a few seconds back. 3.27, third for now, but plenty of class six skiers to come. Niels de Langen, as Stephen Jameson was mentioning at the beginning of the program, was already a world championship silver medalist had never got himself a World Cup medal until yesterday, surprisingly enough. He's in front of Pedersen's time here. He looked very good yesterday. He's dropped a little bit in this second section. Oh, and De Langen slides out of the competition. And after yesterday's success of a first ever World Cup medal, he's not going to replicate it this time around on day two. Coming into this right hander, yep, just loses the back end. Maybe leaning back a little bit. Only Niels de Lange will be able to tell us. <laughs> and that's a conversation for him and the coach. Now, yesterday's winner is being held at the gate. Talked about in his interview how he, he himself knew that he hadn't been as good as he wanted to be this season. So 
Off to Langen. Sliding out there. And here goes Maury. Mentioned quite a bit during the World Championships that uh, Taiki Mori competing now as a para power lifter as well. 1.24 seconds up. That's massive. Oh, but a mistake there. That will slow him down. You saw him just having to get himself upright. And that will have cost him some time. Not too much. In fact, he still managed to stretch the lead. 1.26. Taiki Mori is flying, but another little slide. Thank you, Mori. He's just saying to all of these youngsters, come and get me. Final few turns. Mori, 54.09 to beat. He's going to do that. But only by 0.95 in the end. Well, the man that's aiming to be a power lifter at the next Summer Games. Showing no signs of slowing down in his mono ski. So we expect to see him at the next Winter Games as well. Kurt Oakway, another Paralympic champion on offering. Two point five three seconds back though, now four point two five. Morley weird he was shifting in the opening stages. Surprised to see him drop time at the bottom. Will be the invitation that uh, people like Campster and Oakway want, but Cairns into the bottom part of his run, really getting wide at that blue gate, and that's over a minute for Alex Cairns. So two more Paralympic champions to come. Then is the current World Cup leader, Jeroen Campster. In the past. Three or four months over this World Cup. We haven't been used to Camp Sur making any mistakes. He did yesterday. Already 0.61 up. That's the Jeroen Camp Sur we've become to know. But there's another big, big slide. Controlled it very, very well. But will it have cost him... A bit of time, he's flying here as your own. 53-14, oh, that's big from the Dutchman. Two seconds ahead, despite a wayward slide. That's great from Camp Schur. No, don't wait. Not seen a great deal of him on the circuit this time around, but 34-year-old uh, from Calgary. <laughs> Saw the 2010 games in Vancouver and thought, yep, that's what I want to do. And a year later was competing for Canada in Kimberley. Injured in 2007. Rather big fall. Here he needs a big finish. It's going to be 53-66. Leapt inside that final gate and still managed to come in in third position. So good finish from Kurt Oakway. He goes in front of Pedersen and Kirker. This is Marcus Kratterhofer from Austria. DNF yesterday sliding out. Point six down. Now three point one five down. Let's 
Austrian. Desperate to complete both runs. Find some real speed and utilize his time on the mountain. And in towards the line he comes then. 56, 68, sixth position for Marcus Klatterhofer. Three more to come. This is 36 year old Murat Peli. Running out a bit of a yelp on the course. Two seconds back in the opening stages. Now it's 4.3. Expected time 85.55. Another one that debuted back in 2011. There's a lot of work for charity away from his time in skiing. towards the line comes Pelly then 58.19 it puts Murat in ninth position this is Croix Maya third of the Dutch contingent in the sit ski Far the older of the three as well. 29 years old. But, uh, the three of them get on really well. His impairment due to an accident whilst freestyle skiing back in 2012. Decided to take up sit skiing about 12 months or so after his accident. Wanted to get back out on the snow and see what he could do. Here, 59.87. And now, our final athlete then. This is Lou Braz Dagan. Dagan, who made his debut yesterday. Completed both his runs. A really interesting story for Lou Brasdagam. Bitten by an insect in June of 2014. Thought to be harmless, but it uh, later left him seriously ill. Was, uh, led to quadriplegia, loss of his speech and his vision. And whilst his speech and vision have come back, he does have the use of his arms and legs to a degree that uh, also required major heart surgery as well so 2004 is behind him a career in Alpine is what he's choosing to have a go at right now so well done to Lou Bras Dagan from France and uh, we're enjoying seeing him in his debut World Cup he's dropped into 10th position there uh, Camp Sleur, Mori, Oakway and Pedersen Kirka and Klatterhofer behind, but it's the top five that will be of interest this afternoon. Kirka and Pedersen are pretty close. And the big three after that, Mori and the two Dutchmen. Well, at the bottom, one of those, though, without the finish. Niels de Langen unable to get across. Kurt Oakway, he's up there as well. It's going to be good. Don't miss it. Make sure you join us again later on for run number two here from La Molina.